In this video we're going to do a quick tour of the various container types that are available in a UX component. So in the UX on the toolbox on the left hand side there's a uh, section here called containers and you can see that when you click this control here to add a container you get a list of the various container types. So to get a description of each container you can just click the hyperlink there and that'll give you a written description of uh, each type but in this video we're going to dem demonstrate various container types. So the first container type is just a simple container. It has no subtype. It's just called none. And let's take a look at the use case for this container. So if we look at this UX component here, we see that let's just focus on controls 1 through 9. So if we go here and look at them, we can see that controls 1, 2, 3, 4, these ones over here, are rendering one after each other because there's a uh, break after each control and then you can see that controls 5 and 6 also render in the same column but then controls 7, 8 and 9 render in another logical column. So the way that we did that was we wrapped controls 5 and 6 in a container then we wrapped controls 7, 8 and 9 in a container and then we went to the container end here and we change the break from break after to break none. So if we go here and say break none, that means that container 2 is going to be on the same line as container 1. So uh, here we go. So there's container 1 over there and there's container 2 all on the same line. Now if I go here and turn the break on, then I'm going to see that uh, controls 7, 8 and 9 are going to follow 5 and 6. So in this particular case the containers are being used to control the layout. Now I can go to these controls over here for example and put them in their own container. So now I've got another container there and if I go and turn the break off now then uh, you'll see that controls 1, 2, 3 and 4 will be in the first column and then 5 and 6 will be in the next column. So there you can see there's controls 5 and 6 over there and now if we go back here and turn that break off we're going to end up with three columns of containers. So the containers allow you to very easily control the layout. Now containers themselves can be nested so I can for example take those two containers there and wrap them in another container. So now I've got a nested container there followed by a break. So now we're going to have controls 1, 2, 3 and 4 in column 1, controls 5 and 6 in column 2 and then 7, 8 and 9 going back to start a new line of containers. So you can see there's my first column, there's my second column and now we've started a new line over here. So using containers you can get very explicit control over the layout of your component. You can also basically apply client-side show hide expressions at the container level. So if I go for example to container 4 here and I go to my client-side show hide expression and I type an expression that evaluates to false, so 1 equals 2, then this should hide controls 1, 2, 3 and 4. So you can see 1, 2, 3 and 4 have been hidden and I hid them by just hiding the container without having to go and do show hide expressions on each individual control inside the container. So we've now covered the first of the container types called none. Let's move on now to repeating sections. So we'll pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing our tour of the different container types in the UX component and next we're going to look at repeating sections. So repeating sections are typically used when you have master detail type information that you want to display. So let's go here to a component that we have over here and if we go here and render it we can see that the component is showing some first name and last name information and then it's got fields for an address and you can specify what type of address it is but obviously we would like to have multiple instances of the address because you can have a billing address and a shipping address and uh, all other types of addresses. So you can see here that currently the address fields are wrapped in a container but the container type is set to none. So let's go now and change the container type to repeating section and then specify how many instances of the rows in the repeating section we want. So here we've got five rows. So now when we go and render our component we see five instances right now 
of the controls in the repeating section and we can click on the add button to add new rows and then we can delete rows from the repeating section as well. So repeating sections are used when you want to render master detail type data structures. So let's go back now and look at some of the other container types. So next in the list of container types are panel headers, panel footers, control groups, button groups and spinless groups all which are typically used in mobile applications. So let's go now and take a look here at a, a UX component that uh, demonstrates various of these uh, control types. So you can see here we have at the top of this component here we have a panel header and a panel footer. So you can see there is my panel card but inside the panel card over here we have a container called a uh, panel header. So this all of the content, all of the controls inside this container are rendered at the top of the panel card in the header section and then at the bottom here you can see at the end of the panel card we have another container called panel footer and everything, all the controls inside this container are rendered at the bottom of the panel. So you can see there's our panel header and there's our panel footer. Now if you look carefully here you'll see we have first name, last name, company input controls and then we have address, city and state and you'll see that the controls look slightly different. In the first three controls here you can see that the controls have been rendered without any border around them. They've all been wrapped inside a frame and there's a horizontal line that separates them. So let's go and take a look at how that was done. So you can see there's those three controls, first name, last name and company and they've been wrapped inside a container called a control group. So a control group is used in mobile applications when you want to group several different input controls into a logical group and render them without their borders and put line separators between them. On the other hand, address, city and state weren't placed in, inside a control group container so they render in the normal way that they would uh, normally render. So next you can see here we have three buttons and the buttons are touching each other and they look as though they're sort of a single logical control. So if we go back now and look at our buttons over here we can see that these buttons, the three buttons, have been placed in something called a button group. So if we go back to our list of containers we can see there's our control group and there's our button group. So if we go now and we turn this from a button group back into a normal standard container so we'll go and change it to none and then if we go and render our component we can see that the three buttons are rendered as individual controls and right now they're being chopped off because I have set their size to be 33% which makes sense when their their size has been set to 33% of the total width but since the container itself is not a button group container it doesn't really make much sense. So let's pause right now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing a tour of the uh, different container types in the UX component and we can see that in order to make the buttons render a single logical group of buttons we just put them in a button group and then you can see here there's our buttons now rendering in a button group. So the next container type that we'd like to talk about is the spinless group. So if we go to the next panel here in our component we can see we have three spinless controls here and these spinless controls are touching each other and they've been rendered as though they were a single logical control even though they are three separate physical controls. So again if we go here to our three spin lists we can see that they've been grouped in a container type called a spin list group and therefore they render as a single logical container. So the next container type that we'd like to talk about is the flex layout. So let's go now and discuss flex layout. So you can see here in the flex layout container here we have a search box and a button and uh, the purpose of the flex layout is to dynamically size the width of controls that are in a container. So let's go now to working preview here and go to the next panel and what we see over here is a search box and a button and they fill the width of the uh, panel and now when I switch to horizontal mode you can see that the size of the button stays fixed but the search box automatically grew so that the two controls together 
take up the same horizontal space. So if we go look now at how the search, the flex layout container was defined, you can see that inside the uh, builder here, we've specified that we'd like the button to be a fixed size of 100 pixels, but we'd like the search to be a size of flex 1, which means take up all of the remaining space. So the meaning of the uh, flex width specification is defined in some detail here in the help that you can read for control widths. But anything that has a width of flex will be dynamically resized as the uh, container itself changes size. So the uh, flex width container is used to dynamically change the width of controls when the uh, flex container itself changes widths. So now let's go and take a look now at say the uh, window container. So the window container is used to display content in a pop-up window. So if you scroll to the bottom of the uh, component here you can see we have a window container and it has a static text control that says here is some text that is displayed in a window. Now when I go and I render the UX component, I don't see that text anywhere. So all of the controls in the window container are hidden until the window itself is displayed. So now you can see now when I click this button over here, the window is displayed and there is the uh, control that says here is some text in a window. So all of the controls in a window container are rendered when the window itself is displayed. So to actually display the window, you can see there for button 1, we've defined an on-click event and then in the on-click event we've gone to action JavaScript and we've chosen the um, show container window action and we've specified container number 7 which was the container that we wanted to display. So that's the window container. Now let's go and take a look at the absolute layout and the no float containers which we'll do in the next video. So we're continuing our tour of the different container types in the UX component and next we're going to discuss the injectable content container. So the injectable content container is used when you want to inject content in a different location in the UX component. So let's take a look here at this original UX that we looked at at the beginning of the video. And you can see here that at the very end we have a container right now that has a container type of none, so just a standard container. And inside it we have two controls called injectable 1 and injectable 2. Now since these are at the end of the list over here, they render at the end of the uh, uh, component. There's uh, no break between injectable 1 and injectable 2 because we turned off the break over there. But you can see here that these two controls render after control number 9 because that's the order in which they appear in the UX component. So the injectable container allows you to, the, to inject the content at some other location. So I'm going to go now and turn this from container type of none to container type of injectable and then you can see it says where do you want to inject it so I can specify the location by the ID of a div or by the ID of a placeholder or I can also use unspecified so we'll discuss unspecified next but let's right now choose placeholder and you can see that at the top of my component I have a placeholder here which was placed by using other controls and then placeholder so I've got a placeholder called placeholder number one. So I'm going to go here and specify that my target is going to be placeholder number one. So now when we render the component, instead of seeing injectable one and two at the bottom of the screen, which is where they would have appeared in their natural order, they've now been moved to the top of the screen. So the injectable container has allowed me to inject the content at some other location in the UX component. Now, the main use case for the injectable content container is when you want to insert content like a search box for example in the header or footer of a list control and in that case you'll choose the unspecified method over here and then when you define the list control inside the header you'll be able to consume the injectable content in the list control. So that's the primary motivation for the injectable container type. So next let's go now and take a look at the no float container. The no float container is a special container that is used when you want to get more precise control over the CSS of controls. If I go now and uh, render this component, you can see that 
there's a certain amount of vertical spacing that has been automatically added to the controls, both vertical spacing and horizontal spacing, so that the controls themselves are all laid out nicely and don't bump into each other. So the way in which this spacing has been added is that each control has been added into a special div uh, that has a certain amount of padding on it. But if you want more precise control over the CSS and you're writing your own CSS to position controls, you might not want to wrap each control in its own floating div. So you can see that if I were to go here, for example, to this container now and change it to no float, then you'll see that when we render it, that controls 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all touching each other now because the div is normally placed around each control with the padding that is specified by that div is no longer present and therefore the controls themselves are now touching each other. So the no float container type is a, an advanced container type that is aimed specially at people who want to write their own CSS to control the position of controls on a UX component. So let's pause now and pick it up to discuss the final container type which is absolute layout. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the different uh, container types in the UX component and we're going to discuss the absolute layout container which is a special container type used to position controls at absolute locations. So normally the controls in a UX just flow from left to right, top to bottom and uh, they break onto a new line whenever you have a break character over there. So you can see if I go there to working preview, all the controls are on their own line because there's a break character after each control. If I go and turn off the break after last name, I get last name and first name on the first line. I can go there and turn off the break there and uh, you can see now that we've got state and zip on the same line. So I can control basically what logical line each control appears on, but I don't have control over the absolute position of each um, uh, control. So if I go and wrap all of these controls now in absolute layout container, then I can go to the absolute layout position builder over here and open up a, uh, a WYSIWYG editor where I can then go and place all of my controls. So there is my absolute layout container now and I can grab that control and place first name over there and then go place last name over there and then go and place city over there like that and then go and place for example state and uh, zip like that and then I can move them so that they are nicely aligned I can go and adjust the alignment over there and over there. And then there's several menu options here to help you lay things out very easily. So for example, if I go there and select two controls together, I can go and um, specify options like make them all the same height or make them all the same width, etc. Now, one of the main use cases for the absolute layout container is to put a bitmap image of a form behind the absolute layout container and then carefully position each of the controls over the fields in the bitmap to give the appearance of a form that is identical to some say printed form which would of course be the bitmap of the uh, form. So let's go now close this down and now go over to working preview and you can see here that the controls have all been positioned now at an absolute location. So in this video we've discussed the uh, various container types that give you a great degree of control over the layout of your controls on a UX component. Thanks very much for watching.